Oh, and one of the perennial questions that everyone asks, I ask it, is did the universe have a beginning? How can we begin to approach that question? Well, it becomes technically very tricky. And I'll try to explain that to you. But I always say, well, it may not have a beginning, but it's got a history. <laughs> and it's got an age. What we know now is that the universe has been changing over the billions of years since that starting point. <laughs> now, what we can do is make calculations going backwards, getting the whole works crushed into a very, very tiny space. When you have that happening, the laws of general relativity tell you that space and time can begin to merge. We don't know exactly what happens, but if you get a situation like that, you may end up with the time dimension no longer being well defined in the way we think of it. And therefore, there is no instant of time beginning. Because of the nature of time itself, gets so changed by general relativity when everything is so squashed together. Exactly. But you have to understand that whatever is happening there is in a split second, right. a split so fine that no clock could possibly measure it. Right, right, right. And so from that time on, the 13.7 billion years, we could say, yes, we have an age. We can have a birthday for the universe, <laughs> even if in that split second, time was not well enough defined to say we really have a beginning. Okay, so we're not going to use the word beginning because of the nature of time in that very early split, split second. But let's talk about how we know that the universe is 13.7 billion years, or the different ways that, that we can uh, um, get back to that point. Uh, what are the different mechanisms that we could... Well, let me take an interesting example. Quasars, they're some of the most powerful light sources in the universe. And so we can see them at a great distance. And when we start placing them out they come into this great shell surrounding us at a great distance, let us say uh, some billions of light years. Mm -hmm. Now, that would seem very odd that we, <laughs> in our Milky Way galaxy, would be in this center. But there's another way of understanding that, and that is that as we look out, we're looking back in time. Mm. The universe was not always the same. There was a time when it was brilliantly filled with these powerful quasars. And what we're seeing is that early epoch which surrounds us. It's one of the most interesting ways in which we see that there is a history of our universe, that it has been changing over these billions of years. And that's because as we look out, we're actually looking back in time. We're looking back in time. Another thing we notice is that the chemical composition of the universe is different. Mm. If we uh, go back, there are many fewer of the heavier elements, uh, much less iron, much less carbon and oxygen. Those elements are being built up during the history of the universe. And it's part of the reason why life doesn't appear in the first billion years of the universe itself because the elements aren't there. Yeah, and those would have to be built up in stars and then you have supernova explosions and then they go out into the... So you know that there has to be this sequence. So now we have a sense that there has to be a history because things as we look out were different. Now, how can we then go to, to an age, to specific numbers of, 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 uh, of, of years that have, have occurred? What are the different mechanisms that we could get at some numbers? Well, the easiest way to explain it is because of the red shift, the Doppler shift of the galaxies rushing away from us. I often like to say, okay, if I'm giving a lecture and we now look roughly 15 minutes after the lecture has finished, and people are streaming out of the hall. <laughs> Those that are going fastest, if they go in a straight line, are obviously going to be the farthest away. Uh -huh. So, 
if you can see the velocity with which they're going and how far they've gone, you can easily calculate back and find out how much I ran over time in the lecture <laughs> when, when we let them go. And that's the same way uh, with the universe. If we can get the distance and the speed of distant galaxies, we can calculate back when they were, as the poet Robinson Jeffers puts it, all crushed in one harbor. <laughs> and that's the number that I, I, comes I, out 13.7 billion years. How do we years. do that approximately? How, how do we uh, uh, figure out the, uh, the speed and the, and, and the distance? The speed is relatively easy to figure out because it shifts the spectrum. It moves the spectrum to of the, the light that we see to the red. Mm -hmm. And that's a little bit hard to do just by color. But fortunately for us, this rainbow spectrum mm -hmm. has little dark lines in it mm -hmm. for different elements. Uh, and those can be the fiducial marks that we see shifting. So the absorption lines for different elements, as we see, we know the characteristic of those, the, 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 that spectrum of those lines. So as we see that shifted toward the red, you can then calculate, calculate the implications the speed. the speed. Now it's rather harder to get the distance mm -hmm. because we can measure in various ways uh, distances that are comparatively near to us by geometric triangulation. Mm -hmm. But as we go farther, it's strictly a matter that light becomes fainter as it distributes over a larger uh, outgoing sphere. In other words, faintness means farness. Yeah. As long as the absolute quality of the brightness is, is similar, right? So it's the game plan of astronomers <laughs> to find objects that are intrinsically the same. In their brightness. In their brightness. Mm -hmm. And then the faintness will indicate how far away they are. That is a very tricky business. <laughs> Especially with dust in between and all sorts of things. <laughs> yes. Uh, so it requires a lot of sophisticated corrections. but. Overall, uh, there has been good agreement. Now, if we go back 15 uh, years or so, uh, guess what? Big controversy by maybe a factor of two mm, or more mm, mm. in how we calculate the distances mm. and therefore this time. But everything has come together really very well. Yeah.